My name is Rich Swanson. Uh, I live in Dexter, Michigan now. That's right next door to Ann Arbor, Michigan, home of the University of Michigan. Uh, I'm a retired corporate lawyer and I started telling moth type stories. And from there I branched out into uh, other stories of uh, questionable authenticity. Some people call them tall tales. Some people call them lies. So today's story is a true story. Just in terms of putting my story in perspective, I, I would like to say that there are many, many different types of stories pertaining to healing. And some of these stories are, are profoundly moving and emotional and even life-changing because these healing stories will describe the process of recovering from healing from some unimaginable, unthinkable tragedy. And when you hear it, it'll be remembered for the rest of your life. It may even be life-changing. My story is not that type of story. My story <laughs> is a humorous account of my own healing from a, a rather minor, non-life-threatening pain. But that's okay, because humor in and by itself has healing powers. Uh, just a heads up, my story has a tiny bit of adult content. And it goes like this. I was working for a large multinational corporation. And in the mid 80s, they transferred me to their European headquarters in Brussels, Belgium. So I moved there with my wife and two young daughters. And when I got there, I took up a new hobby, riding jumping horses. And I'm telling you, I was just having the best time doing that, jumping bigger and bigger jumps, going around to uh, jumping competitions in Belgium and France. But after a while, I started to experience some discomfort. And, uh, in my private area. And I'm telling you, if you just stop to think about riding a horse over a jump, you've got your legs spread out, you're straddling that horse. And even though there's a saddle there, I wanna tell you a saddle really is just not that soft. They're, they're kind of hard. And the horse goes galloping up to this jump and it's a four foot jump and just think, of the power and impulsion, he just explodes off the ground. And he's up there four or five feet off the ground and that explosion catapults you about this far out of the saddle. And then you come down on the other side of the, of, of the jump with impact, I'm telling you, impact that knocks you right back down into that saddle with your legs straddling that horse. And it's just not once or twice, but in the course of a, a competition, you have 12 to 14 jumps, you have some warm up, you may have a jump off. This could go on for 20 times, impact, impact. I hope you're feeling my pain. So at any rate, it was getting worse and worse to the extent that uh, I either had to stop riding or solve the problem. And so, I got to thinking about it and I thought, you know, what if I just start wearing a jock strap? A little more support, a little less wiggle room. I might be good to go. So I mentioned that to my wife and she said, yeah, great idea. She said, I'll go and get you one tomorrow. Now, I must tell you about my wife. She is just the most helpful, supportive person for the whole family. She dedicated her life to the family. Whatever was required, she would do it. If you had to make a, a, a costume or work on a project, run an errand, haul the kids around to games and so forth, she did it. And always with the best attitude, always with just a big smile. Plus, all four of us were trying to learn French. Her French was the best in the whole family. So the next day I came home from work. I said, hey, Lynn, did you get that jock strap? She said, no, I didn't get it. I had a lot of trouble. 
this was just not like her at all. So I said, well, Lynn, tell me what happened. She said, we have four English to French dictionaries in this house and jock strap is not in any of them. She said, I don't know if it's because it's considered two words or if it's just such an unusual item, but it's not there. So I had to go to go to town without the word. Now, if you've ever been in a foreign country where you didn't know the language, uh, if you don't have the word, you're relegated to hand signals, body language, that's it, that's all you can do. So she says she went to a sporting goods store and uh, they told her they didn't have what she was looking for, but they wrote down her address on a piece of paper. She stuck it in her pocket. She just went to another sporting goods store, but they too said they didn't have what she was looking for, wrote down her address, she stuck it in her pocket. When she got back to the car, she took out those papers, same address. So she figured that's it. That has got to be the jockstrap store of Brussels. And even though Brussels always has a lot of traffic, she drove all the way across town to get to that jockstrap store. And when she got there, it wasn't a jockstrap store. Instead, it was like one of these um, medical supply houses where they sell wheelchairs, crutches, you know, every kind of tape imaginable. And she just thought, well, okay, probably jock straps too. So she went in and she said it was just so humiliating that she turned around and left. And so I said, well, Lynn, how did you communicate to these people that what you wanted was a jock strap? And she said, well, I'll show you. And she, she said, I took my hands and I put them in the shape of a triangle and just put them right down here. And said, poor monsieur, poor monsieur, poor monsieur, it's for the man. And for the horse, she said, giddy up, giddy up, poor monsieur, poor monsieur. And I, I am looking at that body language and I'm telling you, I thought it was pretty good. However, I noted it was open to more than one interpretation. So she said she went into the store and the first thing they brought out were adult diapers. She said, no, no, geez, that's not it. And then they took her over to the condom case and she said, no, no. And then finally she said, when they showed her these vibrators, she left, she was just too humiliated. I said, Lynn, I'm just so sorry. I mean, I can understand this. I'll take over the project and see what I can do. So the next day I go into work and I look up my colleague, George. George is a Belgian guy. He lived in the States for 10 years, speaks perfect French and English, and he's an athlete. And I said, George, I need to buy a jock strap. He said, oh, no problem. He said, all the sporting goods stores carry them. All you have to do is go in and ask for un suspensoir. He said, it's that simple. So I thanked him and then I'm walking back to my office, fist pumping. I've got the magic word, oh, suspense. Why? I'm just dying to get home to tell Lynn the magic word, oh, suspense. Why? It's Friday afternoon. I even leave, leave work early because I want to get home the whole way driving home. I'm thinking, well, I'll leave it to the French to come up with such a noble, royal, elegant word for this lowly pouch that we call a jock strap. I get home, I go walking in and she said, oh geez, you're home early. Too bad, you just missed the girls. They both have sleepovers. And at that moment I decided not to tell her the magic word, but rather I said, well, let's Let's go out for dinner. She said, yeah, okay, that'd be a good idea. So we did. And I intentionally parked uh, about two blocks away from our favorite restaurant, knowing full well that we would have to walk past the sporting goods store. And when she sensed me slowing down, she said, forget it. They don't have them. I was there yesterday. I said, well, let's just go in. I, I want to ask him a question. So we go in. And this nice young clerk comes up and asks if she could help me. And I said, I'm a good one, so Spence Wallace, you play. You have jock straps. 
she said, may we, may we, and there they were, boxes and boxes of jock straps on the floor, lined up, peeking out from a row of soccer jerseys hanging on hangers. And so she down on her hands and knees, sorting through these boxes of jock straps. Her colleague comes over and both of those girls are sorting through these jock straps and, uh, You know, I got to tell you two things. Just in case you didn't know, jock straps come in sizes. Number two, it's common knowledge over there that American guys are like bigger than, taller, large, taller than, taller than Belgian guys. So these girls are sorting through these jock straps and they're looking up at me and they're saying things like, Grand, grand, may no, tre grand, tre grand, which means large, no, very large, very large. And finally, this one girl, she said, may no, Maximo, poorly American. It's the largest size for the American. And she hands me this jock strap in the box. I pay for it. We go off for dinner. As soon as we get home, I'm just dying to see my new jock strap. And we, uh, I take it out of the bag and out of the box and I'm, I'm standing there looking at my new jock strap. I must tell you, this is a jock strap for an elephant. And I look at Lynn, I say, this is, this is no good. It won't work. It's, it's just too big and it would, it's gotta be exchanged and it would be too embarrassing. Do you think you could do it for me? So Lynn, God bless her, she gives me the biggest smile and she says, no way, big boy, no way, you are on your own. You've got to take that jock strap back and tell those girls that they have overestimated you and by a large margin. So I didn't argue. What I think, uh, I'm thinking, you know what, those girls work late Friday night in order to get Saturday and Sunday off. They won't be there tomorrow. I put that jock strap back in the box, back in the bag with my receipt and at 10 o'clock. I went walking into that sporting goods store. Same girl. She asked if she could help me. I took that box out and I said, yes, I bought this here last night. May we, may we, she remembered. And I said, and now what I would like to do now is I would like to, uh, I would like to buy another one for my son and I'll pick it out myself. She said, may we, may we. So I got down there and I took those jock straps out of the boxes and actually looked at them. And I got one that I knew would fit me and I went up and I, I bought that one too. And that day as I was leaving and walking to my car, I reached into the bag. I got the jock strap for the elephant and I just pitched it into the trash can. And thereafter, I rode my horse with no discomfort because of the healing effect of my new suspensoir. The end. That was very amusing. <laughs> Thank you. Don't stop laughing. Thank you. How come you just didn't say? Your crotch was uncomfortable. There's nothing wrong with that word. Well, I wanted to leave uh, leave this up to your imagination. I mean, it, maybe it was more than my crotch. I mean, can you feel that discomfort? But I think you, most people got, you know, you figure this out. So that's part of the trials and tribulations of living in a foreign country. Nice. Okay. Very good. All right. Uh, Kevin, you have very kindly come in early. And I was just saying to people, I, um, I made a mistake in my numbers. Uh, we, we have uh, plenty of extra time. So um, Kevin, uh, I hope you'll tell now. And then if, if anyone uh, would like to tell, uh, you have the opportunity. Uh, uh, I can tell a story. I have a story. Wonderful, wonderful. So uh, that, after Kevin. 
Uh, sure. So Kevin, you are in uh, Ohio, right? Yes. 